And welcome back to another episode of the Brian Air Podcast. On today's show, Aviation Africa 2024, Boeing furloughs staff, American Airlines strike, Starlink becomes the standard for in-flight Wi-Fi, Aeroflot cabin crew, Riyadh Air, British Airways see-through dresses, South African Airways, 737 Max News and a dodgy straight-in approach. How are you, Paul? How's it going? Quite a lot going on there. Yeah, it's been a busy week, uh, <laughs> news-wise. Yeah. I uh, I spent the first couple of days of the week at uh, that Aviation Africa in Santon. It was quite cool. Saw a lot of uh, people I haven't seen for a while. And, uh, yeah, I actually spoke on one of the panels for, for training. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I said to you the other day, it's so hard. Well, let, let's go back. On the podcast, we're representing ourselves. Mm. So when we speak, you, you, it's it's me speaking. Yeah, we speak pretty frankly. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> then uh, when you've got to speak for, uh, you know, you're representing a company or whatever, it's to- totally different. Eh? Mm. But they're all all learning experiences, I suppose. But uh, it was cool. A lot of uh, a lot of big egos walking around the room. Let's be honest. And uh, but otherwise, yeah. Um, African aviation appears to be on the up. So what was the overall theme about the summit? Was it uh, you know, just a general get together what for airlines? I think technology what what's yeah, it all about? So it's 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 all business to business stuff. So there were stands, mm. there was an expo there. Um, you can your company can take out a stand and you know do whatever promotion you want. And then a lot of the, of the talks were panels discussing various things. Okay. And, uh, yeah, there was a lot of talk about, you know, the usual stuff, the collaboration, and we're going to work together and this. Um, the regulator took a bit of heat, you know. They said, look, we, we want to do these things, but, mm. uh, you know, we can't because there's restrictions in place. So, yeah, nothing new. You wouldn't have come up with any great revelations, but... Yeah. Um, no, nonetheless, it was uh, nice to be invited there, and uh, it was cool. Uh, you know, digressing a bit from the aviation side of things, it was at the Santon Convention Center. Mm. Santon, I don't really ever go there in the week ever. You know, I might yeah. go there to the shops on the weekend or something. I haven't been to Santon in the week for ages. And flip it, it's impressive. <laughs> Sanson itself is really it, look. It was so busy. There were so many tourists there, mm. and um, yeah, it's just quite a cool vibe. It almost feels like you're overseas. So Sanson was uh, was incredibly, uh, yeah, uh, sort of world class, I must say. But uh, no, it was cool. Uh, just a busy couple of days, very busy couple of days, and then of course back into the office. Then this week is all aerospace and defence. Yeah, it's all about the air show this weekend. Yeah, um, I think yeah. they the whole week though. Hey, it's yeah. not just so starting on Wednesday. Started on Wednesday. Yeah. I think they divided up. They've got like the trade shows where only the tradesmen are invited for the last couple of days during the week, and then it becomes public over the weekend. Yeah. But uh, yeah, weather forecast wise, it's not uh, the best. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a cold, wet, windy kind of vibe in Joburg. So be. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully they get they get a decent amount of air showing going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure. Oh. The weather in Josie this morning, not uh, winter's back for a couple of days. Yeah, me personally, I think it's going to be a Netflix and chill weekend. You reckon? <laughs> 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 Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Um, last week I put out the uh, bamboozled by Brian Air mm. quiz. It was quite uh, fun. Uh, a lot of guys did it. And um, the response was pretty good. <laughs> the guys enjoyed, enjoyed uh, testing their knowledge there. But there was an overall out-and-out winner. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Only, only one person got 100%. Who was that? Alvan Berger. Oh, really? Yeah. Well done, Alvan. <laughs> yeah, he, he got, uh, he got uh, 100%. And uh, everyone, uh, the guys did pretty well, actually. Because there were some questions in there that weren't so straightforward. Yeah. Oh. And uh, but it was cool, like a bit of a bit of fun there to test your knowledge. That's quite cool. Yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, I enjoyed going through it because it was a good guess. But uh, yeah, so Alvain no. wins. Um, 
he, he wins an afternoon out at the pub with, with you and me. Hundreds. So it's probably not the prize he was hoping for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the bull's on us. So hold on. So when you yeah. when you hear from Stelis for the day, you can come claim claim your prize. Yeah, dial us up because that's my kind of prize. Yeah, so. just make sure you're not flying in the afternoon or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, so thanks for uh, thanks for engaging with that and doing it. It was uh, yeah, just a bit of fun. If you didn't see it, I'll leave it there at the top of the show notes again this week and check out that uh, quiz. But let's jump into the news. Uh, the main thing for me, pal, Boeing, they are furloughing employees on a rotating basis as a strike by 33,000 machinists continues. The strike began on the 13th of September. It's impacting production and, of course, cash flow. Their CEO stated that benefits will continue for the staff and that the company leadership will also take pay cuts. You would think so. Yeah. Major impact on the production lines of the MAX, the 787 and the 777. Boeing will furlough employees, including execs, for one week every four weeks. This obviously coming in addition to the chaos that they have where NASA recently left two of its astronauts stranded in space instead of returning them on a Boeing CSD-100 Starliner, which developed several safety issues. So all in all, it's not good for Boeing. Again, the trend is just yeah, negative news from that... Uh neck of the woods and uh it's, it's really bad though i mean it's sometimes uh, you just wish they would catch a break and sort this shit out and you know yeah get back on track but uh doesn't look like it's gonna come right for a while no i don't think so the regional flight attendants at psa airline a subsidiary of american voted overwhelmingly to strike due to an insulting pay offer the union demands higher wages and better benefits to match mainline carriers. The strike vote follows months of stalled negotiations and insufficient economic proposals from the airline. Is striking the way? I mean, we're seeing it, you know. It's, it's happening all over the place. I mean, there was big uh, stories about uh, a strike in Kenya, Nairobi, mm -hmm. uh, lots of delays out yeah, of Nairobi affected, last week. Yeah, it was. Because of that, because like, Nairobi is one of those hub spoke systems. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Top airfields, yeah. I don't know. I don't think it uh, is as effective as they hope it would be. It's just, it's just, it's just disruptive. It's incredibly disruptive. It's not like the the sort of these strikes that you see in Europe every year, almost like these planned things that that happen. We, you know, they're going to happen. This, these are different. This this Boeing stuff and uh, wow. yeah, not not the best. Uh, where to next? Uh, despite crushing Western sanctions, so you you, you enjoy the Russian uh, stories, Paul. This is uh, Aeroflot. So what's happening there? They have obviously since the the war broke out, they've got uh, severe restrictions on uh, on what they can do to keep the aircraft in the air. But uh, they're also running into problems of their own with flight attendants because they've just gone on uh, mass calling in sick. So uh, instead, of, uh, instead of them saying, well, shit, the, the flight can't take place then, they just sort of changed the rules there. And then uh, so you now require less flight attendants for certain flights because there simply aren't enough. <laughs> so Boeing 7 can be operated now with uh, 10 cabin crew instead of 11. And the 73 and Airbus 321s can depart with four rather than five. So that's their fix. That's just such a Russian thing. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, these are rules. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Change rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that seems like the most expedient way to get the aircraft back in the air. Yeah. But uh, yeah, simply change the rules. They are looking at ways to get in uh, more cabin crew, make it uh, more appealing. You know, there's a segue I'd love to go down here now um, and, and weigh in on the story a little bit more uh, with with a couple of comments. But I, I'm afraid if, if I do that now, we're going to have another four YouTube videos pulled <laughs> by, by the algorithm. So I'll just hold back on that. But uh, yeah, we'll leave it. I have a feeling a lot of that will change towards the end of the year. You think so? Depending on the outcome of certain events. <laughs> yes, we can't say what the, those events are. Oh. Can't, even, can't even mention the name. Mm. But uh, yeah, you're 100% correct. 
So uh, this next one, Ryan, let's chat about it a bit. This is all about United now are going to be offering high-speed internet on its planes. They're going to use uh, Starlink to do that. Uh, Starlink already available on Hawaiian, Qatar, Air New Zealand, United, Zip Air, and Air Baltic. Okay, so story on its own. Mm. However, high-speed internet is, is like you're probably more likely to go to a coffee shop these days that has a decent internet connection, particularly if you're going to do a bit of work. We were discussing this yesterday, yeah. the culture of going to a coffee shop and doing a bit of work. If the coffee shop's got Wi-Fi, you, you're going yeah. to go. Now, airline tickets, you, you're paying for an expensive product. It's expensive to fly anywhere these days. Yeah. An hour down the road to Durban is one thing, but if you're on a long-haul flight... How important is Wi-Fi connection to you? And a lot of these uh, sort of like Air France, they got a, I don't quite know how they do it. You get free Wi-Fi, but it is, I don't know if it's designed to be slow, but it's basically, it only works on sort of like WhatsApp or mm. message. Okay. And but if you send me a voice note or something, there it doesn't doesn't even let you attempt to download it. Same as sending a picture or whatnot. Yeah. So it's only for forward and backward chat. Which I don't want this to come out the wrong way. It's probably the worst thing to have on a long haul flight because you know you, you don't. Re I would say you don't want to be able to chat to someone, but it's it's more of an annoyance than anything else because your messages are all coming through. Mm. You're sort of obliged to reply, particularly when it comes to work things. So yeah. a lot of guys communicate with us via WhatsApp, but mm. now suddenly you're sitting on an aircraft, you're getting work messages through. They can see that your message is delivered. So if you don't respond for the next eight hours, they're kind of, you know, what's going on with this yeah. guy? Whereas before it would be, okay, one tick, this guy's not, uh, he's not available. He'll get to me when... Now suddenly you've got the message is delivered. Why is he not replying? But the internet's not fast enough to actually do anything. You can't get on the net. You can't download anything. So it's just a pain in the ass. So Starlink, I assume, you're going to have proper internet that you can use for gaming. You can use for whatever the hell you want. That's next level. Now, if you've got a flight and there's two available flights, one airline you know has got Starlink internet connectivity and the other one doesn't, and they're about the same price, you're going to go with the one with the internet. Yeah, look, I mean, if you want to be entertained and uh, kept busy and you've got a lot to do and you know that you can achieve that in that 11-hour sector yeah. uh, with high-speed Wi-Fi, then it totally makes sense. It's the time. I mean, it, it's weird because being on an aircraft on a long-haul flight, that really is the best opportunity to go down a bit of a deep dive down YouTube and all the rest, isn't it? Yeah. Well, look, I typically uh, would use it as an opportunity to catch up on as much of the red wine options that they have available <laughs> 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 and listen to my music. But, yeah, uh, that's not going to chat. Yeah, listen to music, but yeah. it's cool. But then you have to have downloaded because I realized this last time as well. I, I, li you, I listen to music yeah. all the time in the car, yeah. whatnot, whatever. But then I jump on the plane. L my last trip, hey, I came to listen to my normal uh, playlist. But it's not downloaded. But it wasn't downloaded. Yeah. I didn't even realize yeah. it wasn't downloaded. I hate it when that happens because you're so used to you know, always being in connectivity. Yeah. And then when, you know, when you need it, it's like, oh, shit. It's I actually didn't know. And that was a bit, oh. of a bit of a stuff up. I was just thinking about it now while you were chatting about it. Is, 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 don't you think that in a way it might end up being... Because look, it must cost the airlines a packet to have these in-flight entertainment systems set up and running and kept up to date. And, Big time. You know, to offer a decent enough in-flight entertainment package to attract customers. Yeah. Uh, that eventually it'll be like, well, if we have Starlink, the passengers can sort themselves out because everybody's got For their sure. own device. You don't need to actually have that in-flight entertainment yeah, or expense or weight added to the aircraft, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What's to stop the the TVs on the back of the chair, what's to stop them working with, with connectivity? With your device, yeah. So you can actually either project your iPad uh, over to it or, you know, it can have its, in, it will have its own browser so you can, you yeah. know, do whatever you want. I don't know. I have I, it like I, an Apple CarPlay type 
thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think gone are the days with airlines where it was kind of understood that with an airline, you, you're you going to board, you're going to get uh, a shitty seat, you're going to get really bad food, you're going to get cheap wine, you're going to get a warm beer, and you've got no internet and all the rest. I think those days are sort of gone where – First of all, you have to encourage people to want to fly in the first place. Yeah. You know, you've got to actually, uh, if the travel is such a big part of it and the travel is such a poor experience, which it is. I mean, traveling is... It's a it, hack, man. It's a hack. Eh? <laughs> and it's, uh, it's not, it, it hasn't really improved. You know, it's funny. It's gotten worse. When you are traveling, how easy is it to spot the experienced travelers versus the people that are doing it like for the first time? Oh, yeah. It's you know, your experienced guys have got the yeah. neck pillows, the noise yeah. canceling headsets, the bags packed, yeah. you know, uh, dressed in a certain way because yeah. they know that yeah. you know, you're basically going to war. Mm. <laughs> 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 the economy call ask cabin for the next 12 hours. You've got to be as comfortable and as equipped as you possibly can. No, you're right. Um, you see, and then on the other spectrum, yeah, when it's when it's not, and you've got too much stuff and you're mm. carrying, uh, like my big thing is I, I don't get anywhere without my, my laptop, which is in my backpack. Yeah. But then I don't want my backpack and something else. And that can totally get derailed if you're not careful when you're going through duty-free. Oh, yeah. Because you see something cool there at the <laughs> duty-free and it's like, ah, let me go and buy this thing. But now suddenly you've got your backpack and a sealed bag, yeah. which uh, kind of stuffs it all up. Yeah, true story. Um, just to digress ever so slightly, it is a topic that we've got on today. But, I mean, you're talking about airlines trying to make it like more attractive for passengers to fly. Don't you think British Airways is about to blow that out of the water? I think so. <laughs> yeah. The British Airways would have been your first choice. <laughs> yeah. So the story is there that they now are enforcing or trying to create a policy where they make the uniform blouses 43% thicker because the original ones were too see-through, leading to complaints. Yeah, who complained? Who the <laughs> fuck complains about that? <laughs> I thought it was just clever marketing by BA. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Uh, That's just me. Um, yeah. But yeah. So if you, if you were planning on buying a BA ticket because you, you enjoyed the see-through blouses of the cabin crew, yeah. uh, it's, it's not going gonna, it's, it's to work anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh. These things come up, but mm. uh, I I believe I think I think Starlink sort of opens the the door a little bit to yeah okay we're talking about the internet but it it's all about the product now you you have to have a good product from oh, an yeah. airline perspective you can't anymore it, it's just you just cannot get away with with what you what you used to the competition out there is mad uh, one of the stories here as well Emirates. They're going to be sending their refitted Boeing 777s with the new business class and premium economy seats to the U.S. for the first time. The rollout begins with Chicago in November, followed by Boston and Dallas and Seattle. The airline aims to offer the upgraded cabins on more routes by early 2025. So that's all about putting their new retrofitted cabins on the, the busier routes now because, again, it's the product. They're competing with guys, probably have a better product than them. So they've got to be careful about which cabin they send to which destination. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, in those t particular routes, I would imagine, they're competing heavily for, for frequency. Uh, and those are long sectors as well. Uh, you know, probably not the longest, but, um, yeah, obviously doing their best to try and, you know, put out as much comfort and convenience as they possibly can. Yeah. Um, I do believe there's a lot of excitement there though, at Emirates about the, the A350s coming up is it yeah i had some messages from some of the some of the crew there saying you know, they're quite excited about the new toy arriving yeah they they don't uh, emirates don't exactly chop and change their fleets too often eh? no no so that's been the it's quite an event for them it is know? yeah and i think the 350 is probably going to be quite a successful uh i like the 350 that's yeah, good looking man. it's good looking it's mm -hmm. cool to fly and so quiet. I've actually never been in one. Haven't you? No. Nah. It's, 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 it's definitely, I, I dig it. Yeah. I, the 380 was, 380 flew over me uh, mm. yesterday. Still so cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that 350 is, is a beautiful plane. 
Yeah, and that uh, the, you know, from a pilot's perspective, that cockpit is pretty neat as well. Eh? It is eh? screens everywhere. Yeah, Does I'm sure some internet you. connectivity could do well there in that cockpit. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it relies on some uplinks. Yeah. Um, a United Airlines flight attendant spilled hot coffee twice on a business class passenger during a flight from San Francisco to Honolulu, causing severe burns. The passenger was offered a $75 credit as compensation, which he found disrespectful. Similar incidents on domestic flights can't use the Montreal Convention for compensation. So, uh, yes, but in South Africa, you can buy a house for $75. I mean, I'll take that compensation. <laughs> Talking about comfort, on, a, on a, it's one thing... Uh, <laughs> talk about the, the the negatives of carrying your one backpack around you tend to not have uh, another shirt and another uh, pair of pants and all the rest so uh, yeah when you get hot coffee spilled on you you got the burn issue but then you've also got the fact that uh yeah, you probably got to hop out onto a meeting you got to jump out onto a yeah. meeting and you got no uh, spare pants yeah. So you can buy a 3,000 euro pair of Hugo Boss jeans when you arrive at the, <laughs> at the airport. Uh, South African Airways, Paul, your, your favorite. Well, before I go there, let's get a Riyadh Air. They operated its first non-commercial flight to obtain its air operation certificate. So those of you that thought, I oh, know this is not going to happen, it absolutely is going to happen. Uh, the airline aims to start regular commercial flights in 2025 already with their 7879 Dreamliners. Riyadh Air has formed partnerships with carriers like Singapore, Air China and Virgin already to enhance connectivity and services. So things are looking good there. Do you know anyone that has been employed or going there? Or I actually don't. I haven't had comms with anyone who has, but uh, you know, it's amazing with the, 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 the speed at which they've managed to because it was about a year and a half, two years ago, where this was all still very much a concept. Yeah, money money makes things go fast. Yeah, it's happening quickly. Yeah. So, yeah, exciting to see another airline cruising around. I'm very excited for Riyadh. Mm. I think... Uh, it's going to be a game changer in terms is. of the innovation and the look and the, in the, the approach that they're taking to it. Big time. And mm. I'm also keen to see what they do with the, the, the actual city and that there. Because, yeah... Uh, in the fight game, the UFC and particularly boxing, they've gone crazy with, with boxing. They're paying boxers you don't even want to know to to fight in their leagues there. Mm. Uh, even at the UFC last weekend, you see the whole one of the major sponsors on the outside of the, of the sphere was Riyadh something it said. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's mm. so much going on there and they want to take it to like that Dubai level. Yeah. I'm keen to see how heart pans out it's going to be that's a new destination that wasn't a destination now it's an option to actually go check that place out and yeah. you'll have sort of a world-class airline to do it pretty exciting man i dig it uh your favorite airline Bruce, south african airways they were at the event as well i stayed clear of them yeah i know <laughs> <sighs> they plan to open uh lubumbashi dar es salaam in november Okay. The airline has grown since 2021 uh, with an expanding fleet and increased revenue. We don't know what that, those revenues are because they don't release any financials. But uh, despite challenges with aircraft supply, SAA remains optimistic about future profits and continues to seek funding options for future growth. So it's not exactly like they're getting creative on uh, finding new routes. All they're doing is climbing onto routes that they used to hold which have subsequently been eaten up by the likes of Airlink and well, like with local competitors. Lubumbashi is a direct competition now with Airlink. Yeah. Uh, what are they going to use to go to Lubumbashi? A 320, I would probably assume. 320 is the biggest thing they could probably send in there. Uh, well, the smallest thing they could send in there. That's the problem. We've been to Lubumbashi many times. Is yeah. Lubumbashi going to uh, a 320, uh, Spuri's 320 and Link probably going there in a... 170 or 190 is yeah. there is there that much capacity that needs to go to Lubumbashi every day yeah, I can't see it being that successful for them because I, I know I would imagine that Airlink's reaction to that would just be okay well if you're going there now we're going to go there twice a day yeah uh, I wouldn't <laughs> want to fight with Link uh, to be honest I no. think they they just so they've they've become the heavyweights in this sort of region 
I would imagine. Um, yeah, they're, they're a much, what's weird is they're a much bigger ship than SA. Mm. However, they're far more nimble as well. So if they have to add on another aircraft or do something, you just feel like they will do it overnight. Whereas with SA, you, 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 even though they're probably, well, they are smaller than Link, you just feel that they would take longer to, yeah. to but, make that change. But like the likes of Air Link, Semi and Safi to a large degree, I think, have more agreements and um, yeah, uh, I forget what the word is called now. Uh, interlines, interlines and coaches, all that stuff and, yeah. in place now than they would. So already they, you know, they're boxing from a yeah. One thing we didn't talk about on the on the show, I don't know. I think it was maybe the week when we took a break, but the whole Qatar thing and Airlink. Mm. What, uh, what is the story? Uh, Qatar bought into Link. Yeah, they're now a shareholder. As I a shareholder mm. of, of Link. So how's that going to, yeah. you know, Qatar, because we're talking about products and that. So, you know, a, a viable options for product. Qatar was by far the most comfortable flight I've had in a, a long time. Um, from a cab of the food, everything. It was just, uh, uh, that's a really, really good product. Eh? It's a really sharp product, that airline. And yeah. you tying that in with Link, which is a real premium co uh, product in this country as well. Difficult to go against them. Yeah. <laughs> it will be. Um, they're still selling Maxes. Do you know that? CDB Aviation, a Chinese aircraft leasing company, ordered 50 Maxes, the, the uh, 73-8 Max to de be delivered between 2028 and 2031. It's probably the next available off the production line. It's the largest MAX order from China in nearly a decade. The announcement follows a recent order by the company for 80 Airbus A320 Neos as well. So uh, do you think they bought the MAX because they could only get their hands on 80 Neos? They couldn't get their hands on any more? Probably because of the the engine story. Or do you think that the max is going to, at the end of the day, possibly be Boeing's major savior. It, you know, it's weird to say it got them in the hole in the first place. Yeah. It's but it, it could potentially, I mean, is this max going to be the safest airplane ever made? I mean, it's, I don't know. It's a bit of a weird angle that they're approaching it from. I mean, why wouldn't the Chinese be throwing more weight behind the Comac? You know, you're developing it in your own country. It's your own sort of brand, essentially. I think they are, Paul. But you know what? When we think of... I don't think we quite comprehend the the size of the growth that's going on in China. You've spoken about it before where you've, where you've said you've, you know, you've interacted with colleagues in that and, and the, the rate at which things get built there. And yeah, it's crazy. Happen, it's, it, it is apparently... I'm sure lo lots alarmingly of... Fast. It is. It it's so fast, <laughs> and it there's like this. Uh, you know, I don't think we quite grasp how how big the country is mm. and the the forecast growth that uh, you know not even forecast the the current growth that they're having. So I don't think they have a choice to. They're still going to be buying a lot of Western yeah. aircraft. Can't produce it fast enough, kind of thing. Yeah, mm. exactly. Uh, this one I've added in here. Yeah. Because it uh, came out of the Flying Mag magazine, quite a nice article. But uh, I'm doing it to open up a bit of a discussion. Uh, straight in approaches can be risky because they potentially bypass important landing checklists and, more importantly, cues. Have you ever got yourself caught out on a straight in approach? To an airport ever ended up a little bit hot a little bit high <laughs> and and what and what can you do yeah. um the reason i ask uh, the question i think uh, a lot of youngsters and sort of non-airline pilots can learn from it but i can categorically say that uh, it does happen quite a lot yeah you do get caught out every now and again i think you know particularly when you new and inexperienced the speed and momentum of you know a medium to heavy size jet will definitely catch up on you faster than, than you realize so that's definitely when that uh, becomes a thing uh, but in the days prior to FDAP or mm. FOQA I think 
it was, it was worse. It was way more prevalent because yeah. then Oaks were gunning at 320 knots to five miles. Kind of thing. So you say now that uh, since these um, these tools came in place that monitor you a bit closer, now you a little bit more conservative. I think it mitigates that a bit. Well, let's throw it out there and, yeah. and ask because uh, a lot of airline pilots uh, listening to us, have you got caught out recently? I suppose even with that, I mean, like the standards and arrival in Janusburg, if you know what it's like, you, you plan for the arrival and then suddenly... You get they give in. you the Cenefix. Cenefix, no speeds. Yeah, dive and drive. Above. Dive and drive. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've got to have some big goners to get the aircraft down there. I actually always kind of it was the best that. because yeah. it was like, now no, we get to do some yeah. of this pilot shit, you know? Yeah, exactly. I love And that. there was like a, a challenge element. Yeah. 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 Also, hold my beer. <laughs> hold my beer. But yeah, hold my beer. But you're also in an airline where you, you, if, you know, if you did stuff up, you could. <laughs> phone the boss and say, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it was, never it was always done, you know. Always done with and thing, but mm. I, 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 I've never flown for like a, an Emirates or something. And I can imagine that there's quite a lot of pressure to get an approach spot on in terms of your profile. Oh, yeah. I, would, no, I wouldn't no. want to be high on the profile as a, yeah. you know, by third month as a new Emirates FO. Yeah, you know? it has been said that with a lot of these airlines, you know, if you stuff up just this much, you know, <laughs> you know, it's considered that you're only what you're only as good as your last landing kind of thing. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I know, big pressure. Um, so I suppose that's what the job entails. Bro. I suppose, but anyway, just opening it up there maybe creates a little bit of uh, of discussion there. <laughs> I've got a Brownie toolbox one for you today. Hundred percent. I've actually got uh, two. Um, two cool ones. I told you about it yesterday. Clarkson, and Hammond and May did their last uh, grand tour. Yeah. And uh, it's on, what's it, Amazon Prime. Mm. I really enjoyed it. It's like a, almost a two-hour episode type of thing. It's their last one. Their first tour that they did was in Botswana in 2000 and it was about 2000 actually because it's i think it was 23 years ago yeah which is crazy because from a time perspective it feels like it was the other day but they did it so well they did this last one through zimbabwe and uh, zim actually looked really cool but then they i don't want to sort of ruin the whole thing but they do end up in botswana and it was just awesome but there's a key take out there from uh from that episode mm. clarkson mentions it at the end and it's there's a last time for everything. You know, yeah. there's a last time for this podcast. You know, there will come a time where this it could be the last one. And that's for everything in life. And yeah. it was just kind of, it was, it was cool because the show sort of put it into perspective. They took some of the old video from the first one and then you look at it and go, yeah, but that just felt like the other day. That was 20, 23 or whatever it was years ago. It's that, crazy. It's crazy if you have luck for Oaks our age who, who saw the start of it and the end of it in, mm. in the span of 23, 24 years. It's, it is amazing. And I think what, what hits us pretty hard is how fast that time has gone by. Crazy. And uh, yeah, it's just crazy, man. It's, what do you say? <laughs> Give it a watch. <laughs> uh, it's going to be, if you're in Joey's, it's going to be a very cold, wet weekend. And uh, the Grand Tour, the last episode, uh, very, very cool. And then another one, mainly for uh, moms and dads that don't get a chance to ever watch the TV. <laughs> I, I'm only really, there's only one time where the TV belongs to dad. And that's if the Springboks are playing. <laughs> Springboks or UFC for me, then, then my little ones yeah. know uh, it's not going to happen. Yeah. But even like if there's an F1 on, um, Coco Melon is still taking priority. Yeah. So it's, it's not the best. So this recommendation actually comes, something that I've discovered, something I've had for ages. I'm sure you've got it, Paul. It's, it's uh, Audible. Mm. So Audible is like your, it's your Kindle eBooks, but it's your, it actually, what do you call it? Audio book. And I've always been inclined with, uh, with, my books of the last few years you're always reading something because you think okay this could benefit me mm. so you read like a business book or a self-improvement book or whatever it is 
And uh, Chris Williamson recommended a fiction book the other day on his podcast. He said, have you read Dark Matter? It's really good. But it's just, it's just a story, okay? There's nothing, you're not trying to get anything major out of it. So what I started doing is uh, listening to that in the car on the way to work because it's, it's like a bit of uh, free time. You, you're not being bothered or anything. You, you can sit and concentrate, but you also sort of takes you out of that work mode. And it's, it's kind of cool. You're listening to a really well-read audio book in the yeah. car. So give it a try and let me know what you think. Not necessarily that book, but yeah. choose something that is sort of story orientated, does, uh, sort of nothing to do with work, nothing, no self-development, no self-improvement, just there for the enjoyment of the whole thing. Right. And uh, if you sign up for Audible, I think you, it's... It's not that cheap actually, but you get one audio book a month, mm. which is spot on because for my sort of work life, Commute tough thing, it, yeah. it basically takes me a month to get through a book, yeah. about 11 hours or so. So if you, yeah, it's about a month. And uh, I've been doing it lately and I'll tell you what, that it's actually been one of the best things that I've discovered lately, listening to stories in the car. I can just imagine, you know, it's probably the best way you can be almost in a position where you're somewhat productive in a way, yeah. yet also relaxing in this, uh, the craziness of Gauteng's traffic at the exactly, moment. Exactly. You know, because yeah. uh, I think that's one of the things that frustrates me the most is sitting in traffic is like a waste of life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Might as well fill it up with ingesting a good book. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's that's my recommendation. Cool, man. Just a comment there from last week. Al, thanks for this comment. He said, like a pod, a good comment on the ATR crash. Despite the system being named as DRSing, all transport category aircraft are certified in terms of it being an anti-R system. Operationally, the system can be switched on and forgotten if working correctly, whenever icing is encountered or expected. The need to switch boots on and off to prevent boot bridging is a misnomer from a long past era, but it is often still taught and practiced by some operators. The system, however, is not guaranteed to cope in severe icing. During high workload, like approach prep, the system should have been left on assuming it was working correctly. So that's all to do with that ATR praying we talked about mm. last week. Quite a few comments on it. Obviously, whenever there's a, a accident there, we always tend to have our own theories as to what goes on. It's quite hard to look at that one and sort of uh, rule out a pilot error. There seems to be some major errors that happened there. Bit of a lack of situational awareness and uh, all in all, rather poor. But we'll leave it there until the official report is out. But yeah, thanks for that comment, Al, because that uh, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, it does definitely clear up and add to what I think a lot of us and listeners are thinking yeah. along the lines there. But uh, yeah. Thanks, Paul. Short guys, that was a that was a jaw. Yeah, always is. Looking forward to the weekend and uh, see you next week. Catch the next one. Cheers, man. Bye for now. Bye,